Hey everyone! Alright, so here's our next tutorial for Halloween. And as you can see, or as you can probably guess, it is the muscles of the face. Now, I was trying to figure out how I could tap unzipped from last year, or match it, or meet it, whatever. And this is what I came up with, so yeah. Not really much I can say about the look, it's pretty self-explanatory, so let's just go right ahead and get the tutorial started. Alright, so the first thing I did, I actually covered my brow. I don't know if you can see... Um, but now I'm taking a brush, and this is just a foundation brush that I already used in a tutorial that I just recorded right before this one. So it already has a little bit of red left over on it. I'm going to use red anyway, so I'm just going to use this. And I have a little bit of concealer here on my spatula. And then I'm just brushing it wherever I'm going to want the red. And the reason I'm using concealer is because in my other tutorial I used... Um, face and body mixing medium. So for this one, I'm just going to show you, you can use a concealer before you lay anything down, and then you can use the pigment on top of this, and then it'll still stick, and you'll get better coverage than if you just use the pigment on its own. Now you could use face paint for this. Again, there's many different things you could use, so which is going to be up to you, but I'm just going to apply this in all the areas that I'm actually going to, um, etch the muscles. Now that I have that on, I still need around my eye. Now since the eye can tend to get oily, sweaty, colors will crease a little bit easier, I'm actually just going to go in with this, which is Delionate Fluid Line from MAC. This was a Nordstrom exclusive um, in like 2007, 2006, I don't remember when, but um, I don't know if you'll be able to find it. So you can just use any kind of red primer. You can use any neutral skin color primer, whatever you want. Um, Cryolin Aqua Color in red with uh, eye drops or face and body mix medium from Mac Pro would be a very great alternative to this. But I'm just going to put this on all over my lid. And then I'm going to do it on, or blend it up into my crease and up to right underneath where my natural brow is. Then I'm going to go underneath. So now I have red all over. Looks kind of like a rash or a birthmark. So now that I have that on, I actually am going to pick up a little bit of this which is basic red pigment. This again is from MAC Pro. You could use a red eyeshadow. If you're using face paint, you don't even need this. Um, you could just use red face paint and set that with an invisible setting powder. Get the same effect. And I scooped a little bit of that out on the back of my Petri dish already. And I'm taking this half of a sponge. It's just regular triangular sponge that I ripped in half. And now I'm going to take that red and pounce it on top of all of these areas. You can use a brush to do this if you want to. Only reason I would recommend using a sponge is if you use a brush, if you set it down on one spot and then move it, wherever you first set your brush, all the powder is going to stick there. So one area is going to have a lot more powder, and then when you go to move it, you're gonna it's going to take a lot longer. So it's just a little bit easier to use a sponge for something like this to get an even coat. Alright, I went too far down and I actually got some of the red on my nose, so I'm just taking a makeup wipe and I'm removing the product from where I don't want it. And I don't want this attached like that, so I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take my makeup wipe and just etch out the shape I want. Alright, so now that I have that how I want it, it looks really weird. Um, I'm just going in with this. This is the introduction of the human body, essentials of anatomy and physiology. Uh, my mom let me borrow this book. She's actually a nurse, and I wanted it because it has all the muscles of the face, as you can see. But then it also has um, like the rest of the body and everything like that. Then here's another one. 
I'm trying not to get my fingerprints all over it because my hands are red right now, but there's like a side view and another side view. So, yeah, um, she let me borrow this book so that way I could actually do this tutorial. But you can always Google images and stuff like that. I just like to have something right in front of me so you could print it out. And since I have my muscle thingamabobber right here, now I'm just going to go in and start drawing out the muscles. This is going to be like the part that's going to take the longest. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to take different shades of reds for eyeshadow. So I'm going to start with this, which is Sketch. It's just like a burgundy color. And then I'm going to use... Um, the brush I want to use is not available, so I'm actually just going to go in with my 210. I don't know if you can see. There you go. It's really, really, really tiny. It's got a fine point to it. Now I'm just going to go in and start drawing some muscles. And this is going to be the part that's going to take the longest, trust me. So, just do it however you want them. I actually switched brushes because the one I was using was not working out for me. I just grabbed a tiny, tiny um, angled brush, so I'm just going to use that now, and I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing and following the image that I have right here. Okay, so as you can see, I have lots and lots and lots of little lines, and it's starting to look like muscles. Now, based off of the book, some of them overlap one another. So you can notice in some areas, like right there, right here, I went a little bit darker. That's because I already started adding my shading, so that way you'll see some of these muscles are a little bit higher than others. So like I said, I actually started to do the next part. And I messed up and I forgot to press record anyway, so luckily I messed up because I went to stop recording and it recorded. Um, otherwise that whole part would not be on film. But I was going to use my liquid liner pen, but it's a little too thick. So what I did is I just took a little bit of my face and body mixing medium and I mixed a little burnt burgundy pigment in with it. I don't want to use black quite yet, so I'm just going to use this. This is almost black anyways. And some of these lines, especially now up here, since I messed it up, um, they're a little bit too far apart, and I want a little bit more, and I want really thin lines. So I'm going to go in with that brush that I was using at the beginning of the video before I switched the 210, and it's got the burnt burgundy with the face and body on it, and I'm just going to go in and add like some detail work in between like some of the lines I already have, just to get like really thin lines in there, and then also to deepen up some of the lines that I already put down. Now that I have all of this done so far, now I'm going to go and start adding highlights. I'm going to do this color right here. I don't know if that's going to focus. There we go. It's actually like a pinky, corally, peachy color. I just mixed a orange, red, and white pigments. Or I mixed orange, red, and white pigments together with face and body mixing medium on the back of my hand just to get this tone. 
So it's kind of fleshy, but a little bit on the pinker, peachy side. Because um, I don't want to use white. And then I'm just going to go in some areas that I really want to be highlighted. And I'm going to do a soft highlight. So you can see that's really going to make it stand out. And don't worry about it looking shiny right now. I'm just adding it to those areas that I really want to have a nice highlight. And we're going to set all this with an invisible setting powder at the end so it can have a little shine to it. It's not going to be anything major. It's done, it's set with powder, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take another brush that I used for my other tutorial, it's just a little smudgy blending brush, then I'm just going to take a black eyeshadow, and in those areas that I was talking about before that are a little bit darker, I'm going to go in and actually add a little shadow to them so they stand out even more to add even more dimension to this. So now I have that, and you can see it's already adding some shape and I'm actually just for good measure I'm going to put one right here too and blend out those harsh lines and create some shadows so you can see it's starting to add a shadow to that now if you have any areas that you need to clean up like I got smudges on my nose because since I did it all at once instead of working on this after setting, as you can see, like my palm, like the lower part of my palm is bright red. And then in here, some stuff got in there. Now, as you can see, there's crap hanging off my face. And actually, I'm just taking some scar wax and I'm using my spatula. I'm scraping it. Now, you could do this before with like liquid latex or. Um, same thing with the scar wax with nose putty, anything like that. Um, mainly the inside of mine is going to be painted red, so I'm not too worried about it. And then the outer area I can always do with foundation. So I'm just taking it on my spatula, and then I'm just placing it on my skin. And using my spatula to go ahead and make it all look like the skin is like peeled off. So now I have the scar, wax, scar putty all over. I'm going to go in and blend the edges on this now. But before I do, if you just use your finger, it's going to stick. So if you just use some good old petroleum jelly, um, like Vaseline pretty much, on the tips of your fingers, it's going to prevent that from sticking. So that way you can actually just go in and blend without any complications. Now I have a little bit of concealer on my hand with all my other swatches and I'm putting it on a fluffy brush and I'm just going to pounce that on the scar wax. Same brush, now this time I'm just going to go ahead with a little face powder and set everything. Now I'm going in with the reddish brown eyeshadow and I'm actually just gonna tap a little bit of that right at the base of the wax in my skin to create a shadow like that. 
because you want the skin to look a little bit on the bruised side. But it also creates a shadow to make the wax stand out more. So I have all that done. So I just made some fake blood and you can buy it pre-made. I don't have any because I barely ever use it. But I just used a clear gloss, the basic red mixing medium, and the burnt burgundy mixing medium to get a nice color like that. And I'm going to apply that to the inside of the scar wax. But I'm also going to get some of it on my actual face to make that look nice and juicy as well. So pretty much any area that is still pretty much light because of the wax. Let's go right ahead and smudge this on it. Now that I have the blood in there, or the blood, I'm going to take that same clear gloss, but I'm going to take it on a sponge, and then very lightly all over I'm gonna apply this and I cannot stress how lightly I am gonna put this on and I'm not even gonna put it all over because that way it'll take away from all the texture that you can see because the lights just gonna reflect off of it so once you have that on and you have the gloss all on you're done so I hope this tutorial was helpful to some of you guys and until my next video I will talk to all of you soon Bye.